Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the ZeldaEngine.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Our first question comes from Zelda Games 1095, and he asks, "I've always kept uh, I've always kept Link's name in the game as Link, but do you like to change Link's name in the game? Do you like to put some ridiculous name for fun, or do you just keep it Link?" Um, you know, I actually keep it, uh, I put it as Axel every game because I actually share the console and, the, you know, the saves with other people, so it's just for distinction. Um, I used to put it as Link, but I do Axel now. Uh, though, uh, on subsequent playthroughs, usually when I'm doing, uh, like, uh, other kind, you know, just other playthroughs, I will, uh, put in, uh, crazier names. Ones that I feel fit the game, like, I think I put it as, uh, uh Eldritch in Majora's Mask, or, a uh, Kraken in The Wind Waker, things that I thought sort of fit the game, but, you know, tell me what you guys name your links in the comments. Um... Invader Edver asks, which do you think is better for the series, orchestrated or sequenced music? In my opinion, I like the original sound of the music of Twilight Princess had, but I also think Skyward Sword's music had a good sound too. What's your opinion? Well, I think that with orchestrated music, you have a tendency for it to have a specific style, and sometimes I don't think that style works, specifically when you you want something that doesn't sound like it was like high quality produced with a orchestra or with real instruments, which is things like uh, like Metroid Prime, for example, was a game with a very electronic soundtrack that just would have sounded terrible orchestrated, in my opinion, as sort of shown in Metroid Prime 3, which had the orchestrated sound and style. But uh, it, with the games like Skyward Sword, uh, they don't really like sound fully orchestrated all the time. It doesn't have that style all the time, and really, in the end, unless it's a song with that specific style, which Skyward Sword had a few of, um, it's just higher sound quality. It's better sound quality, and I think that no matter what, that's better uh, if that's the style. If if it doesn't like interfere with electronic music or something that you were doing. Uh, but uh, in between, there's a lot of other differences between Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess's soundtracks, other than the orchestral style. And I suspect that you and/or other people are getting hung up on those details, and not the fact that it's orchestrated. Uh, I think that Skyward Sword is my favorite of the two uh, for all the all the reasons together. But I think orchestrated in particular is it's just a better quality soundtrack. I don't think there's any reason to say that you should go back to the sequence stuff. Uh, Sam Riley asks, and this guy got the quote right for one of the previous uh, two mailbags, so credit for that. Uh, he asks, you mentioned hard mode at the end of mailbag number 101. Have you heard of the three heart challenge? Have you done it or will you do it? Um, I've actually done several of the three heart challenges. For those who don't know, a three heart challenge is basically where you play through a Zelda game and you ignore all the heart pieces and heart containers, even the ones left by the bosses. So you go through the whole game with just the... Uh, you know, the three hearts you start the game with, and it can be quite challenging. I've done it a few times with certain games, though I've actually dropped doing it in favor of the minimalist runs where you don't just skip the hearts, you kind of skip everything, and it makes things pretty challenging. Uh, and uh, I've done a few of those, and I've been doing more of them, and I'll, I will do more of them. I think they're quite fun. But I also, that doesn't change my argument about difficulty levels, because those require you to skip stuff. And, you know, it's awesome having that extra challenge, but I would like a game where I could have that challenge where I still have to use everything, every, all the tools that are at my advantage, and doing so doesn't make it easy on me. That's what that's what bothers me. I guess if they had a few secrets that are meant to make it easy, kind of like the Fierce Deity Mask and Majora's Mask, a little-ish, you know, just, yeah. uh, that might be cool, but I think the majority of items and upgrades should still be, uh, this game should still be challenging even if you collect them. Malik Edwards asks, how would you feel about more spin-off games for the Zelda series, like Link's Crossbow Train, or maybe sequels to some of the games that are out now, like Majora's Mask was to Ocarina of Time? Well, I've always said that I think uh, spin-offs are a great idea, they just is an excuse to have uh, a lot of new games in different styles and mess around with the game world. I love to see spin-offs of any uh, game series, and I think that they have no, they don't need to adhere to anything uh, specific about how the game the games usually play or not. I don't mind spin-offs at all. In fact, I think Zelda should make tons of them. Uh, but uh, regarding sequels, I don't think that they're bad, but I think that in general, the Zelda series prospers the most when it tries to do its own thing from game to game. Even with the connecting timeline, I think that that's its strong suit, sort of, just crafting these unique worlds. So while I don't mind seeing it again, it's been rare in the past and probably should stay rare in the future. See it again sometime, sure, but I think the Zelda series kind of should do their own thing for the most part. Zelda games... Not the ser There aren't multiple Zelda series, there's one Zelda series, but there are multiple Zelda games, and those should do the same, like, different things most of the time. Yeah. 
Uh, Buberto asks, uh, It has been my opinion that w that they should not have created a Zelda timeline. I've always pictured the Zelda games as being the same story, just being told in a different manner in each game. Do you think it would have been better if they had said that instead? Uh, I don't mind, I guess, ultimately, that they did define the Zelda timeline, although I think that the whole third timeline thing was really weird and kind of dumb. Uh, but I actually do agree with you on some level that uh, I, I always considered it like that. I always considered Zelda, not that it was the same story told multiple times, but that it was more like the Final Fantasy series, where they had this loose concept of what the world is supposed to be like, but they kind of craft their own world from game to game. And yes, there are some timeline connections, but sometimes they're just games that feel like they're in totally different worlds, and that was okay. Um, I don't, again, I don't think that th them uh, putting the timeline thing in really damaged things all that much regarding that. Uh, well, regarding the quality of the series overall, but I did like that mentality, and I wouldn't mind if they had done that instead. And in fact, I probably would have preferred it. I just don't think that that uh, defining the timelines was too bad, except for that third timeline thing. That sucks. It's just oof. Uh, Carlbot asks: Are the Poes in Zelda based on Edgar Allan Poe? After all, most of the stories are about death. I feel like I brought this on with that uh, question in the Halloween mailbag because I've got asked this twice since that, but uh, I don't think that they're based on him, they're just ghosts. I think it's just simply, it's based on him in the sense that it's a pun name playing off that theme. I don't think it's based on the fact that it's death, just so much as creepiness. I don't, I don't know. It's a punish thing based on Edgar Allan Poe. I agree. I, think, I don't think that they just, I think that's the reason that the name is Poe, but other than that, I don't think it means anything. Hylian Gerudo, who got most of the sounds and songs right on one of the previous mailbags, so again, credit to them. Uh, asks, uh, why does the official artwork for A Link to the Past show Link with golden brown hair when the in-game sprite had pink hair? Well, I don't know if there's someone who's com who's uh, uncovered like some proper answer for this, like for certain. Uh, but me, what I figured out, what I consider about it is that um, it's just like a palette thing, like they they a palette thing where they couldn't have uh, they couldn't get it brown without some kind of uh, screw up with colors in other games because those. Uh, old games had limited palettes. I don't know why they would have that would have been the case, or maybe they just did it because it actually stood out as his hair instead of like blending with other colors. I really don't know, but I don't think that they intended it to mean that he had pink hair. I think it's just something that they did with the, visually, and it's not supposed to be canon or whatever. Uh, he's definitely supposed to have brown hair. In the game. No, no one thinks he's supposed to have pink hair. Yo, that's crazy. Um, Gano3985 asks, I was reading the backstory for A Link to the Past, and I noticed Aghanim had gotten the trust of the king by becoming his advisor. In Ocarina of Time, Ganon does the exact same thing. Do you think this is a coincidence, or was this planned? Uh, it's a coincidence in the sense that it's a common plot element, and I think that's the only reason they did it, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sharkfangs9 asks, I like how a lot of the dungeons in Twilight Princess seem to appear more natural and part of the environment or surrounding area, instead of there just uh, being a temple there. What do you think about this, and do you think that they should continue this in later Zelda games? Well, I don't think that that was necessarily a super prevalent element in Twilight Princess. Certainly that was the case with a few dungeons, but I don't feel like it was some overarching theme that the game really milked a lot. I mean, there's like the Force Temple and Goron Mines, but a lot of the other ones aren't necessarily more so than uh, in previous games. But uh, I do think the idea of having that is interesting, and I think taking it further even and having it all in a natural environment would be interesting too. And I just think that the idea of expanding with the dungeon concepts in general is something that they should do. I've talked about that a lot. Kind of incredibly a lot. You probably This is probably old news. So, yeah. Um, Rose asks, So how exactly did the Magmas go extinct? And did the Zoras just evolve a lot? There's no real reason to think that the... Uh, the um, I forgot their name for a second there, excuse me. The Perella and Skyward Sword evolved into anything. I mean, that that evolution, that, necessi that necessity for fans to explain these kinds of things with evolution theories just doesn't make sense to me. There's nothing actually suggesting that. So I don't, I don't get why that they have to make that claim. I'm just because, like, the Wind Waker did that with Ocarina of Time. I don't see why they have to say that, that the whole series does that. Um, and there's nothing, again, there's nothing suggesting it, so that, that's definitely not the case. I don't, also, don't think you need to assume that the Magmas went extinct. They were invented for Skyward Sword, and they just weren't in other Zelda games because they hadn't been introduced yet. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them again. Um, they might come up with some kind of explanation as to why they disappeared, or just assume they did disappear. Maybe they moved somewhere else, maybe they evolved into something. <laughs> there's that again. Uh, but, you know, I don't think there's any reason to make any immediate conclusions from that yet. Lynx Fangirl uh, 231, who got, also got most of the songs right and did it before most of the others, so again, props there, um, asks, I was reading through the official Skyward Sword strategy guide and it said that the time shift stones send the area around them uh, back exactly 1,000 years. Is this true? Uh, the strategy guides and whatnot actually made a lot of claims that aren't supported anywhere else. There's that, and I also think there was something about 
uh, the Lanero Mining Facility of belonging to some mining corporation, and then they mined the resources of the area uh, until it became the desert. Uh, we know that something made it into a desert, but uh, all those other details are really unconfirmed, and I question where the strategy guide got this info. So I would say that that's not the case, because this isn't supported anywhere else on any more official source, and it sounds like something that the strategy guide just sort of made up or assumed or inferred from what was uh, suggested in the game. So, yeah, that's about the best I can give you. It doesn't seem to be canon, even though they claim it is. All right, guys, that's it for this time. Be sure to send your questions to the contact page or and what and other information in the description, and I'll see you guys later.